Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit, and this is my constant daily prayer for you, that the Holy Spirit will enlighten your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and give you understanding and open the understanding of each of you because it's pointless for us to have knowledge of the letter, of the Bible, of the theology, if we do not have the spiritual discernment necessary to understand the voice of God. Because God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And in order for you to communicate with Him, you also have to be in spirit. And that's why God gave us a spirit so that we could have communion with Him to hear and obey His voice. He gave us a spirit which is our thoughts, our intelligence, our reasoning. It's not an entity. It's intelligence, God's intelligence, the one He gave us. So He gave us a spirit so that we could communicate with Him in spirit, in spirit and in truth. However, He also then comes an, an important detail because He also gave us a soul. He breathed the breath of life in us, which is the soul. The soul, the breath of life, is the feeling, the heart. So our spiritual being, our soul, our soul is to be able to feel just as God also feels towards us. God is love. God is love. He is not a feeling, but He is love. He is compassionate. He is merciful. He is patient. God gets angry. He gets upset. God feels the suffering. He suffers because of human beings. He suffers, as you who suffer as well, as we all suffer, we have faced problems, right? Situations in life, we, we deal with people's ingratitude, and so does God. And you can imagine how great His suffering is. So when Jesus came into the world, he came with this structure that we have, the same structure, spirit, soul, and body. Jesus came in the same way that we came into the world, but He was generated by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God involved, enveloped Mary and placed the seed of His Son in her, which is what happens as well when the person receives the Holy Spirit. When the person receives the Holy Spirit, that's how it happens. The Holy Spirit involves the person and places in them the breath of life, of eternal life, and places in them the soul, the feelings. So, when God created man, He made man with this structure, spirit, soul, and body. Body is, is the dust. The body will return to dust, and you know it. Dust is dust, isn't it? You know that dust is always around. 
However often the person cleans the house and dusts it off, five minutes later the dust is back, so it penetrates the house. So dust is dust, and it's annoying, isn't it? But anyway, this is how our body is. Our body is dust. It will go back to dust. And everybody knows that. That's a, a given. But God gave us the Spirit in order for us to think and reason and evaluate things, analyze things, which is the intelligence, so that the Spirit then could conduct the soul direct the soul, and the soul would conduct then the body. For example, the soul feels, the soul is what gets upset, the soul is what laughs, what cries, what groans in pain, that feels hungry, that feels sad, that feels the ingratitude of people, it's the soul that gets angry. It's the soul that keeps grudges and resentments. It's the soul that suffers. For example, you who have a problem with insomnia, it's your soul that suffers with insomnia. It wants to rest, but it never feel, falls asleep. It's the soul. The person, for example, that is anxious, it's the soul. It's the suffering of the soul. Every kind of suffering of human being is focused on the soul, on the soul. For example, just for you to have an idea, the parents represent, for example, the spirit. The soul represents the children. So when the parents teach the children the right way, what is correct, because they already experienced it, so they know what they are, they are saying. They know what it's like to be a child, a teenager, and so on. So the parents teach the children what is right, but the children think that they know all things and they want to do their own will and then they disobey and do whatever they want. And then the souls, the soul which are the children, will suffer. And what can the parents do? Nothing. Because it's their will. And this is how it is with God. God suffers because of our sufferings. But what can He do? What he could do and what he can do is to instruct us so that we won't suffer. And that's why that he gives us the word, he gives us the spirit, so that the Holy Spirit may guide us. His children, to his children, he gives the Holy Spirit, which guides us into all truth. It is what Jesus said. He will guide you into all truth. However, if the person wants to follow lies and satisfy the whims of their soul and their desires and lust, what will the Spirit be able to do? The Spirit says, don't go, but the soul says, no, I want to go, so, and then. What happens is that the person will suffer and reap the fruits of what they are sowing. What, what is my point? My point is the following. God, in His infinite wisdom, in His infinite wisdom, created for human beings a spirit, a soul, and the body. The spirit communicates with Him, with intelligence, with wisdom. The soul we will communicate with whom? Whom? The soul wants to communicate with another soul. Isn't it? So God created man, male, and he created woman, female. So, so two creatures in order to complete one another. And these two creatures would then handle, manage all the earth, everything that God had created. But they rebelled against Him. 
And because of that, they've reaped the rotten fruits of rebellion. And therefore, humanity multiplied within this context of rebellion. So, for example, you suffer when your children are rebellious. That's why it's sin. Sin exists since the time of Adam and Eve. But it's interesting for you to notice the following, that God created man and woman to complete one another, because it's impossible for a man to be happy if he doesn't have his wife next to him. It's impossible. There is no happiness. Because it's what complements a man. It's not just a woman, a female, but one completes the other. One completes the other. And God established this rule from the beginning, where one would depend on the other. And when both get married, then they start a family. And that's where a family begins, a new life starts, because the children come and so on. Well, the conclusion I want to get to, what I want you to know, dear friend, is that God gives us intelligence to think, to reason, to consider, to evaluate things, so that we can make the right choices. So, as long as... A man does not find his wife, he will be incomplete. If he finds the right person that will fit him perfectly, then he will be perfectly complete. He will be happy because one will complete the other. But if he, if a human being, the man, does not find that right person and marries the wrong one, or if she marries the wrong person as well, they will suffer the consequences. And that's what we've seen out there. Parents that are divorced, and who suffers the most? The children. Because they grow, they suffer, they grow, you know, in, in that loneliness of not having a reference of a mother or father inside their own home. And society is destroying itself this way. But thank God that His Word gives us direction so that we may behave according, according to what it says. Because it's what He said. It's not good that man should be alone. Look at that. God worrying. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. He could have created man with the ability to lay an egg, for example, and the egg would generate a child. But he didn't. He created a person that could have communion with the human beings. I've heard, for example, just to illustrate things here, when the guy is, is in jail and he is placed in solitary confinement, the solitary confinement is the worst type of prison there is. Why? Because the person is left alone there, literally alone, alone by themselves. There's no one even to talk to. They have no one to share their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions. While they are all together there, one is there talking to the other, distracting one another, one says a joke, the other one says something else, and so on. They communicate with one another. I was in prison before, so I know what it's like. So there is communication. But when they are placed alone in a solitary confinement, the guy groans because there is nothing to do there is no one that he can talk to. So God saw that. When he saw that man was alone, he said, this is not good. So he made him a helper comparable to him that could complete him. Well, my dear friends, I want... I would like you to know that it's pointless for you to conquer the whole world. 
It's pointless for you to invest in your education, for example, and being highly educated, be someone important and intelligent and capable. If you don't have someone that is comparable to you, that completes you, you will be frustrated. And that's what we are seeing. Many women are studying and putting all of their strength into getting a degree, they get a diploma, and they become the head. And then, later on, they cannot find someone, they cannot find a man that could be their head, that will play this role in their life, so that she can give themselves to, to that relationship and complement one another because the man is the head, the woman is the heart, is the soul. So when you join head and soul, then you have that the church of the Lord Jesus. Jesus is represented by the man in a marriage. He is the head. Jesus is the head of the church. And the church, which is the body, is exactly what complements the work of God here on earth, the kingdom of God here on earth. He, Jesus, the head and the body are the members that are part of this body, which live according to the thought, according to the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church. So I'm not here saying that uh, women shouldn't study. No, not at all. Not at all. Quite on the contrary. She should study and him as well if they can get a degree, have a, a diploma. Excellent. You will contribute a lot more to society. However, sometimes that's exactly what's been happening. People invest in their education and they forget their love life. They forget their, let's say, emotional side. And they say like this, no, I'm going to go and conquer and succeed, so I won't depend on a man. Okay, then you're starting wrong. Because if you don't want to depend on a man, then you don't want to form a body. You want to be a head. It's just a mule without a head. Have you heard of this? In old times, they would speak about the mule without a head. Have you seen a mule without a head walking around? So it's a woman. A woman that is intelligent, that is capable, but she doesn't have a head. She doesn't have that person that will complement her. And so is the man. The man may be educated, capable, intelligent, with a, a scientist, with a diploma, but if he doesn't find a body, which is a woman, which is the soul, he will be a head without a body. Have you seen a head without a body? Have you seen it? Have you seen a, a, a head walking around? No, a head needs legs, a body, in order to think and to act. So one complements the other. The man is the head. God created the man to be the head. He created the woman to be the body. One cannot live without the other. One depends on the other. And these, these principles is what we learn in the love therapy. Every Thursday, I've been, for example, just as an example here to you, we invest in the young men who want to do the work of God, as well as the young ladies that want to do the work of God on the altar. They want to dedicate themselves to give to others what God has given them. So when the young man has the right intentions and the girl as well has the right intentions and then they meet and they form a partnership, they make a covenant, then this couple will generate children to God. They will be happy because they will give themselves so that their life may be 
let's say, will be transferred, given to others who are suffering, which are living the way they lived before, in the past, before they met God. But now they are happy, and they want to help others. So, in the universal church of the kingdom of God, we base our faith upon this principle. It's pointless for me to have all the education in the world, be very intellectual, very wise, be very capable and, you know, have theology, understanding. It's pointless for me to be well educated, very capable, if I don't have someone next to me, if I don't have the body, if I don't have a wife. So, in the universal church, that's how it is. If the pastor, if there is a division, a separation between the pastor and the wife, I already know that the pastor is not well or that the wife is not well, and it won't work. They cannot serve as an example, be a reference to people. My first sheep is Esther. I'm her, her pastor, her shepherd. She is my first little sheep. I take care of her, and she takes care of me. The more I look after her, the more she looks after me. So we, we live in this harmonious relationship. We have peace at home. We have perfect peace in our home. When she is not well, then I am not well. When I am not well, then she is not well, because we are one body only. So it's not possible to separate this covenant, to break this. And that's why God says, it's not good that man shall be alone. And when he gets married, then he does not accept divorce and separation. It does not please God. So... That's why you who are watching me right now, and perhaps you are very successful in your financial life as a professional, you are excellent, but if you are married, if your wife or your, your husband or your fiancé, if things are not okay between the two of you, it's because something's wrong. Because if whilst you are just getting to know one another, there's problems already, then imagine afterwards, after you get married. So it's better for you both to seek for the one that can unite you, the head with the body, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who glued us together. The Holy Spirit made Esther and I one body, one flesh, and we fit perfectly. It's like we were born for one another already. But it was the Holy Spirit who made this. So if you want to know more about this, how you can build or rebuild your home, your house, which is the most important thing in your life, it's more important than your profession, more important than all your studies, because if you are doing well professionally, but you are not going well emotionally, then there, everything that you learned won't be worth anything because you're going to be unhappy. Because if the soul is suffering, then what's the point of the spirit being well? The spirit will also suffer. If you are doing well in your finances, you're being successful and all, but you are struggling in your marriage, then you are unhappy. Don't you think that God will make you happy if, or without, rather, without His Spirit being in both of you? It's not enough to be in just one of you. Both of you have to have the Holy Spirit so that you can be glued together and then become a reference of God here on earth. Well, I already spoke too much, and I will continue speaking about this subject, which is very important, because the greatest problem I've seen people going through is in their love life. Their love life. This has been the main problem. Betrayal, 
and being upset with one another. So there's a lot of femicide happening. So many things happening to women, especially because they are weaker. Did you understand, my friend? See what God says. It's not good that man should be alone. It's not good. Everything that he's done, he said, this is good. And God saw that it was very good. But when he made man alone, he said, oh, it's not good for man to be alone. So he said, I will make him a helper comparable to him. And this is what we speak about on Thursdays in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. A special treatment directed on building a family which starts with the marriage. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.